Mexico. Davini here. Welcome back. Today I'm just gonna drive up to the Rio Grande Gorge and uh, see if I can get some footage of some rafters coming down the river. And we'll hang out by the river for a little while and see what we see. So stick with me. And we're coming down into the Española Valley here. This is the lovely town of Española. It was the seat of the Empire of Spain before it moved to Santa Fe. Santa fans like to make fun of Española, but I like it here. And uh, Española has really kind of uh, grown a lot. It's sort of up and coming right now. You can still uh, find places to rent for a reasonable rate here. Land is still comparatively cheap here compared to Santa Fe. And uh, it's actually a really, really beautiful area. And you have access to all the national forests from here. So I like Española a lot. Uh, sometimes uh, I think about living out here because it's, it's cheaper. But I can, you know... I, it's kind of hard to find work here. Probably better off in Santa Fe. And we are approaching the little town of Velarde, which uh, Velarde is the last little town before you enter the gorge. And we'll pass through Velarde and then head up the gorge. Velarde is pretty green. Um, it's mostly apple orchards here. And this is kind of like downtown Velarde here, which, uh, as I mentioned, it's mostly a apple orchards that kind of stretch down along the river, but this would be the, you know, urban area, I guess. There's a post office here, and there's a gas station, and uh, that's about it. Uh, the gas station is kind of a general store, not really, and, you know, there's some uh, fruit stands that are, you know, open seasonally. Taos 27, Cuesta 53. And we are entering the gorge right here as we exit Velarde. The Rio Grande is on my left. And uh, there's just some windy road here till we get up into the gorge. I'm in Dixon here, uh, and I took the Dixon turnoff and then just came up this insanely steep road. And uh, the road goes up even further, but I stopped because, I don't know, I just got a little nervous, I guess. It's really narrow, really steep. I am alone. If anything happened, <laughs> I'd have a long hike ahead of me. So uh, instead, I turned around, parked the truck right there, and uh, 
just thought I'd hop out and give you all a little picture of the scene here. And uh, let's go back down this incredibly steep and narrow road. If I had Jason with me, I'd go to the top. Uh, and that's pretty much Dixon dead ahead. What a what a great view of Dixon from right here. I always wanted to climb up that mesa over there on the other side of the canyon and see what's on top. Now I don't need to because I can see what's on top from right here. <laughs> Pretty sure this road I'm on would be considered terrifying uh, by most, most people who aren't accustomed to this kind of country. I'm used to New Mexico roads, but I have to admit this is a this is a little frightening even by my standards. It's just that it's incredibly steep and narrow. Um, if you go off the sides and the shoulders are soft for sure, you're going to get stuck up here, and it's not a place you want to be stuck. New Mexico is vast, and uh, we got a lot of wild country here, and still a lot of areas that are totally inaccessible. You, you know, you'd have to hike in to get to a lot of it. A lot of it you wouldn't want to hike into because it's just, you know, a lot of New Mexico is just badlands. Alrighty, here we are in the Rio Grande Gorge. There is the Rio Grande down there. There's a bunch of rocks up there that are threatening to fall down on us. Actually, they're all rolling down the mountain. It's just that our feeble human consciousness can't conceive it because they're rolling so slow. And I'm going to hike down this very precipitous path. Uh, there is no path, actually. Just going to uh, try to uh, pick out a way down there to the river and get the tripod set up so uh, we can get some footage of the rafters. I know there's rafters on this river because I saw some pass by recently. That's where it came from. And that's where we're going.
All right, uh, this will be a little experiment. One of you asked me what kind of camera I use for doing this stuff. And uh, actually, I use several cameras. The, uh, I just recently bought this really cool Panasonic FZ300, which I like a lot, uh, although it's a little out of date. It uh, wasn't really designed to work with Windows 10, so uh, I'm having a little bit of issues with it, but in general I really like the camera a lot, and I think it's going to work for what I need. I've, I've just lost a lot of good footage uh, learning how to use it. Uh, I also use my phone. As you can see, uh, I'm recording myself right now with my phone and my FC300. And uh, this phone I have takes really, really good pictures. So uh, it works pretty good also. Uh, sometimes even better, it seems, than my fancy FC300 uh, for recording myself. I also have some really tiny little cheap kind of spy cameras, you know. Um, that you can get for usually 50 bucks or less and they do take HD video so you can mix them in now the quality is never good and uh, the they're cheap and they tend to break and not work very well so uh, you know I use them sometimes all right uh, I think I found a good spot here I don't know if you can hear me or not. I'm going to yell. Uh, but hopefully, as the rafters come around this bend, we'll be able to get some shots of them from here. So, uh, let's see who shows up. this beautiful little river snake here very bravely facing the current in an attempt to get away from me I don't know how long he can hold his breath underwater like that. Pretty amazing. Real quickly, I would like to give a shout out to all those people really out there who've been supporting me in my efforts on this channel. Uh, specifically, uh, I'd like to thank Robert uh, for the very generous donation. Uh, even though uh, YouTube won't let me monetize this channel until I get a thousand subscribers, Robert found out a way <laughs> to make a donation. And uh, thank you very much, Robert, because it really does help me uh, to keep going with this. Uh, it gives me courage uh, and inspiration, and it also uh, it helps, you know, make it financially feasible. So um, big, big thank you to Robert and everybody out there who uh, is following. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. And. Uh, I hope I can just keep doing this uh, for a while and bringing you some good content.
Patty. How are you? Good, how are you today? Nice day to be on the river. <laughs> oh, here they come. I'm not exactly surprised that there aren't a lot of rafters out here in the middle of a pandemic. Um, most summers, if there's enough water in the river, you will see rafts going down this river. One right after the other. I mean, it's like a, practically like a, the log jam ride at Disneyland. up a bag of rolls at the market in uh, Milwaukee. Nice fresh baked rolls. Mmm, they smell nice and fresh and delicious. So, I did bring along my trusty Swiss Army knife. And in my backpack here, an orange and I've got some cold drinks here some tea and some water tea and water and I have just a little bit of cheese and a little bit of ham I got at the deli not much just a quarter pound of each I said which is probably even more than I would need for a sandwich, but I got Swiss cheese here. And I kept them in my backpack with the cold drinks so they wouldn't get too, too nasty. And uh, it seems to have traveled okay. This, this cheese looks pretty edible. So, some cheese. Put it on the bun. We got some ham. I got more cheese than I needed. Quarter pound of ham seems, yeah, I guess that's about right. So, put some ham on the bun. And I'm keeping it simple today. I did not bring any, you know, mayonnaise or uh, you know, condiments or anything. But, did I mention to you that in New Mexico, we are kind of fanatics about our green chili. <laughs> so, uh, I brought some green chili and uh, I'm just gonna quickly cut the end off of that and cut this green chili right in half, like that. And then, I'm just gonna stick it right there, right in my sandwich, just like that like a good New Mexican and eat my ham sandwich with some green chili. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm.
It's a little dry. <laughs> no, it's delicious. But uh, I do wish I had some mayonnaise or some kind of dressing for it. That's okay. I've got some water to wash it down with. This green chili is pretty hot. I had an extra t-shirt in my backpack, which makes a pretty good napkin when you don't have anything else. chili. I actually brought a boat with me. I have an inflatable kayak in my truck, but um, unless you have another person with another vehicle, it's not much fun on the river with a kayak, because uh, you got to walk back to your car somehow. Uh, I've hitched it before, but not today. So last night, uh, I was laying there in bed and asking myself, what am I doing with this YouTube channel? Why am I doing this? You know? And uh, the answer isn't that simple. I mean, there's more than one reason. Part of it, I think, is just, uh, it's the motivation behind every artist is, you know, the message is, I exist. I was here. You know, I'm painfully aware that we're not here for long. And, um, so... The time we spend here, you know, to give our lives some kind of meaning, uh, we want to make a record that we were here. Whatever you do, maybe you're a painter, maybe you're a writer, maybe you make videos or you're a photographer, maybe you're in construction. It's the same kind of thing when you build a building and it lasts for years after you're dead. Uh, it's a, it's contributing to the world in some way, you know. I always thought that I would do something great in my life, that I uh, thought I was somehow special or that I was going to, you know, give some great contribution to humanity. And, and now... Uh, Later in life, looking back, I just feel lucky I've survived this long. And, uh, I guess I don't have much hope of making any big, significant contribution. But uh, I can make a small contribution. I can, I can, you know, maybe I can make a little difference and. Uh, You know, if I can just open one or two minds, then I guess that, that's good enough, you know. In the long run, none of this is going to matter, I, you know, unless, uh, unless we manage to start exploring space and, and, and get beyond what we're doing. No one will ever know we existed on this little mud ball in this far-flung corner of our galaxy called the Milky Way. There will be no memory of our existence. No one will even be around to look at the ruins. 
<laughs> that's getting a little heavy. All right, folks, I hope you had a good time with me on the river today. Um, going to pack it up and head back to Santa Fe. But I hope I will see you in the next video.